Good morning, and welcome to the second hour of Theo Trade. I am Professor Jeff Bierman. I'm broadcasting live from Chicago, and today is Wednesday. It is September 4th. Let me clear my screen here. It's 2024. Good morning, Theo Trade members. Well, 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 well. We survived the day yesterday, and the dippers just could not control their bowels. They had to come in and start buying away. I don't know if that's a good idea. Give me a few minutes to unpack this, but let me lay it on the line. This will be the final day, the final installment, the final frontier, the completion of a four-part series. Now, the only person who does four-part series on Theo is Mr. Kaufman, our CEO. But I challenged and I did it. This is the last day of Attack of the Clones, profiling the rise of artificial intelligence. So I'll give you a, like a one minute recap when I get there. Today, we're going wholly into individual companies, growth rates, data about the future of AI. I'll also point out that a big, big bull on AI for the last four years went bearish today. He is bearish on AI. He says AI is topped out. He says AI hype is over. And now it's just going to be business as usual. Interesting, interesting UBS analyst. Names don't matter. In the meantime, let me give you some color on the market today. Did I think it was going to bounce? Of course. I said yesterday when I left the program, we're not going down in a straight line. We're never going down ever, ever in a straight line. It's never going to happen. Never. From now until the end of time. There's no way the, the powers that be, the Citadels, the Black Rocks, the Fed, they're not going to let this go down 800 in a day. It's not going to happen. So if you get a 100 point, 130 down day, take the money and run. I covered a lot of short positions yesterday. I covered some this morning on Shake Shack and Taiwan Semi. Take the money and run when the opportunity is there. Let it bounce up and then reload. That's how I operate. I scalp. I don't sit there and go, mm, me hold for five weeks. Not going to happen. It goes up, it goes down. They're going to defend this to the end. If we were down 3,000, they're going to defend it. It's a perma bullish mindset by the powers that be. No matter how bad or how much they lie, they're going to keep buying. Keep remember that. So you got to trade the markets and not invest in them on the downside. On the long side, you can roll your hand and play the buy and hold and cross your fingers, which I don't. But when it goes down, you cannot play this buy and hold crap. You've got to get in and get out because they can squeeze it, which is they're likely going to do. So here is what it looks like to my day today. Now, I said this yesterday. We're not going down to the straight line. I proved my point. I told you, I told you, not going to happen. The MACD has not quite crossed over the signal line. That alone is going to invite buyers. The RSI has stopped at a 50 handle. That alone is going to bring in and bold buyers. Then you have the slow stoke, not completely cycled, but it will eventually. So my suspicion is this is the logic of the perma bulls. This is their logic. Meatloaf, mom. This is what they're thinking. Every single time it bounces off 5450, above it, higher, it won't matter. They'll buy the rips and they'll buy the dips. They're going to keep buying this forever until it breaks 5450. You break 5450, you take out the signal line, you take out the zero line. There's nobody who's going to buy this. It's going to go into free fall but it's going to go into free fall probably back to about 5,200, at which point the algos will circle the wagons and start beating it back up. People, there's too much at stake for people who have poured millions of dollars in the last 10 weeks. And if this goes down and blows them out, we got a financial crisis on our hands. They're going to defend this hell or high water. It won't even matter, no matter how bad the data gets. Keep remembering that. So here, this looks like we're due for a bounce for a few days. I think we're going to bounce for a few days, but we're not going to bounce very far. Not going to happen. But what's more important is the monthlies. The monthlies by far and away trump the dailies, not even close. That's flat and it hasn't quite lip curled. It needs to lip curl. If it lip curls, it's all over. But by putting it flat, it psychologically caps traders to think we can't push through 5,700. Not likely to happen. Not. That 5,700 will likely be the high for rest of the year, for the rest of the year, okay? We're probably going to move sideways, bounce up. We could stay here at 5,300 to 5,750, but it's likely to stay here, maybe pop through to 6,000,
but now this becomes prohibitive. But the monthlies are still in favor of the bulls. I can't say it is, it's not, because it is. This is still what people call a bullish market. The algos are going to buy overbought on the monthlies because it's above the 80. But yesterday was a game changer for a lot of money managers and a lot of people who looked up and said, oh my God, tech actually goes down. So now they're pouring all their money into financials and consumer staples. That's where all the money's going. And that's where I'm shorting people because that's where the bubble is. Now, the next thing I want to throw out is this, just for kicks, okay? I believe in my research, white papers, people I talk to, I believe Bitcoin's worthless. This morning, an article was printed on Bitcoin that by an analyst who says, quote, at Vanek, Vanek, a very reputable firm, says by 2050, this will be at 42 million. Now, sit and digest this. We're at 56,000 in a bubble. And this analyst says, strategist says, has three case scenarios. 40, 42 million, million, 42 million. I'm not exaggerating. I'm just the messenger. So don't beat on me. 42 million by 2050. Base case scenario, this will be about in the 130 some thousand. Okay. We're partly in worst case scenario. This will be 131,000 by 2050. Okay. Let me explain something to you. Let me let me unwind and unpack all of this for you, people. Let me unpack all of it for you. Why? Because this is the fate of the S&P. All of you on the S&P are going to suffer the same as this. It won't even matter. It doesn't matter what you think. It's going to happen. The question is, when is it going to happen? And I don't know. I don't know. Here's what I'm telling you. We're now in a curated channel. So if you own this product, you're totally screwed. You're dead. You just don't even know it. You're just dead. You're now in an algo channel where the algos have taken over. So forget your fundamentals. Nobody cares. Look at the lip curl. This is the most important thing I could ever teach you. It's the lip curl. If and when that rolls through that signal line and goes waterfall, that's going to open up 10,000 points to 20,000 in a month. It's going to wipe everybody else out. And all of a sudden, you're going to hear screams from everybody going, well, where's BlackRock and where's Blackstone and where's Citadel? They, they're, they don't have an, they don't have any vested interest in it. You do. They're just in it for the fees. So keep an eye on Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the descent has already begun. It's like your things do. You're, you're dead and you don't even know it. This pre, where is it going to end up? I don't know. All I know is when that curls and that goes through 50, it's all over. Why do I bring this up? Because this is the next iteration of this. This will eventually go sideways, maybe from now until next April, maybe June. I don't know. Maybe till next year. I don't know. But the idea here is once this starts backtracking on a monthly, you're going to wish you were never, ever in this product. Everybody who shorts every day is going to clean up. Now, the dippers have the upper hand. You have the upper hand because you're buying into strength. You're buying into momentum. You're buying into the upper end. The algos will defend you. You keep buying this. The algos will defend you for now. Eventually, they're not going to defend you. They're not. So my advice is, you want to buy this, go for it. Trade it with Corey. Trade it with Tony. Trade. Don't invest. Don't invest. Trade it. Because once this flattens out and curls, it's all over. It just, we go into this long-term corrective phase where you're like, oh my God, I didn't know the market was allowed to go down. Exactly, exactly. Oh, it's not, it's allowed to go down. Of course it's allowed to go down. You bid on the sandwich. That's what I keep telling you. Get out of this product while you can long-term. Trade it both ways. Buy it, buy the dips, sell it. Short the rips, trade it both sides with Corey, both sides, but don't hold this overnight. I would not do that. Last thing I want to throw out. Okay, here's where you know we're near the end, okay? Look at the pan, watch the panic. These are your genius money managers. The geniuses, they're so smart. All-time high, Colgate Palmolive, all-time high. Look at the RSI. That's called panic. That's panic. Because if you actually look at the stock, it trades at a 32 handle. Do you, want, do you know what the stock's growth rate is? I do. It's 5% long-term. 
This is a, if you cut this stock down by 75%, it would still be too expensive. That's what I'm telling you. This is what rotations do. Rotations create what's called financial porn in your head. And people are like, well, if it's going up, it's got to be right. Just because it goes up doesn't mean it's right. And just because it goes down doesn't mean it's right either. You better price these things. This is going to crash eventually. It's a bubble, people. It's out of control. So's this. So I shorted it. I'm like, Sh crap. I ran in there. I just threw in 100 shares at 73.42. There, that's how I do it, people. This is a bubble. I just have to get out of this thing before 9.13. So I've got basically nine days to bail because I don't want to pay that dividend. But I'm going to see where this takes me. This stock is ridiculously, ridiculously priced at 30 times earnings. Once again, the money managers are doing no research. They're just rotate. Oh my God, NVIDIA doesn't work. Get me out. Oh wait, I got money. Let me buy something that's going up. It's rotating psychologically. If we're going into a slowdown, let me buy defensive. Oh wait, we're not in a slowdown? Sell defensive. That's not how the business works. You buy what's cheap and you sell what's expensive. That's how I've lived for 36 years. Whatever's expensive, I want, I'm out. I do not care. Even if I, it's not, I don't have to even short it. I just don't want to own it. Get what's cheap. This is a bubble. You have bubbles everywhere. It's everywhere. Here's another panic bubble. Here's another pan. They're everywhere. The consumer staples are in a bubble. The financials are not in a bubble, but they're damn expensive. This is when the financials tip and consumer staples tip because energy's blown up and tech's blown up, it's all over. This is a fainted memory. It's gone because the, the tech itself is going to continue to slow down. It's financials and consumer durables and consumer staples that are holding this thing up. Remember I said that. When they run out of places to hide, it will come down. These are phenomenal, phenomenal shorts. Maybe not so much financials, but definitely consumer staples. Now on that note, I want to move upward and onward to complete and get done today, which is the last and final day, the final frontier of, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I've got a lot. I got some really unbelievably cool emails last night. Thank you for the two people who sent me the emails about stuff on what they thought about AI because they're not sold on it. And I'm like, neither am I. So the category is trends, right? In From my archive. But the title of this program is Attack of the Clones, now borrowed from Star Wars, because basically AI is just cloning people is what it is. The rise of uh, artificial intelligence, or you could just call it A period, I period. That's what we call it here. Okay, so here's the final day. I'm going to give you a one-minute synopsis of what I've done from Thursday, Friday, and yesterday. Simple. Day one, the history. Day two, the mechanics. Day three, the ethics, the pros, the cons, the benefits. So where do we move forward today? Where am I going today? Oh my God, my, my position on UAL just, just broke out. Fantastic. Okay. So where do I go today? Okay. We're going to talk about the trends today. Because again, we're in a trend category. We are in trend category. So we're going to talk today about trends. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. I'm just going to lay down a few of the major trends. So for those of you who are thinking about shorting AI stocks, investing in AI stocks, trading AI stocks, swing trading AI stocks, whatever your strategy is, this is that day. I'm going to deliver for you. Just give me about five, 10 minutes. So what are the most important trends in AI in 2024? Like what are the most important trends to look out for? Okay. The first one is multi-model AI. So if you're going to go out there and you're going to try to find companies, look for companies that specialize engineering to a degree copywriting multi-model AI. So it's it's complex model AI. That's like the first place, okay, you want to start to look for. So what is multi, uh, poly, multi-modal? I spelled it wrong. My goodness, multi-modal AI. 
okay? What the heck is multimodal AI? Like, what is it, okay? It's the ambition of state-of-the-art generative AI, wherein multimodal can take multiple types of data as input and then operate across different modalities that are not strictly new phenomenon, like text-to-image models, like clip and speech-to-text models, like Wave 2 VEC. They've been around for years, but we're moving into a new generation. So there's going to be an open AI GPT. Google's Gemini is a form of multimodal AI. Remember, multimodal AI is where you want to start your search when you're looking for the next generation or trends around AI and the companies that specialize in them. The next one is what's called small or smaller, okay, language models and open source advancements. Go look for companies that specialize in open source advancements, it's a key buzzword, or smaller language models, okay? You can basically find these just by Googling them, binging them, and you will come up with tons of descriptions and tons of different resources, okay, where to find all this. So basically what it comes down to is smaller models are far less resource intensive. The cost of running an AI business is millions to billions. It's cost cash flow draining. Companies are now downsizing, not upsizing. That's not true. They're downsizing their AI uh, functionality in their companies. They're lowering their budgets to become much more efficient, cost efficient, and targeted. So again, look for open source advancements where they don't have to go outside the company to pay other vendors to build stuff for them. They can build it in-house through the open source advancements. That's the direction I wanted to point you. Next, look for companies. And one company I think that really is a big part of this, okay, Microsoft is a big player and so's Oracle, which I'll hit on in a second. GPU shortages, and cloud costs. So I got to go back, capitalize, look, these are the new trends. There's a trend towards smaller models because there's what's called the GPU shortage, which is the graphic, uh, it has to do with graphics productions. And of, of course, you know, NVIDIA is on the cutting edge of all of this because they make the graphics accelerator chips. Look for companies that help other companies lower their cloud costs and overcome their GPU shortages, okay? That's another key area you need to focus on. These are trends all throughout 2024, and they're gonna make the crossover next year into 2025. Also, model optimization, okay? It's getting more accessible. So look for companies that don't necessarily build the models, although they can, but they can come in as a like uh, as a resource, as a supplement to help tweak or optimize models to lower that cost and get more productivity and efficiency. So the trend towards maximizing performance of more compact models, it's well served by the recent output of course open source. So they have things nowadays, the key buzzwords are low rank adaptation, LoRa, quantization, okay, and direct preference optimization or DPO. So look for companies that are, and it, you can actually look in, I'll show you on the analyze page, under the description of the companies, you can look underneath and say, oh my God, I had no idea that that company specializes in optimization of AI. Yes, that is the next like iterative generation of where business and trends are coming from, focus on the companies that offer those services. Here's another ba uh, big trend working. Customized local models and data pipelines. These are what I call key buzz terms or buzzwords that you need to do searches on to find out which players specialize in these trends. If I spent the day talking about this, it would eat up the next three hours. I haven't got three hours. I've got 30 minutes. I cannot go through this in depth. I'm just giving you 
the keywords. I'm giving you the entree. You then go the next leg and you do the due diligence. Key things you need to follow. Customized local models and pipelines, okay? Then you're gonna have a big explosion into more powerful virtual agents. So again, you know that chat GPT box is like virtual agent is like calling Schwab and nobody answers and a person helps you. Or you call AT&T or you call Verizon. I can call them. Nobody's gonna answer the phone. Instead, a voiceover protocol picks up and all of a sudden it's a virtual agent. Or I can actually type into a text for a chat and a virtual agent will populate and interact with me. There's gonna be a lot more trend towards virtual agents, okay? Also, follow companies that specialize in regulation, copyright, and ethical AI concerns. There are companies out there who are like legal uh, companies, they're um, consulting companies, PricewaterhouseCoopers is monster in this business. They're the ones who are getting paid billions of dollars to advise companies how to manage regulation, manage copyright, and avert AI ethical concerns, okay? The last one of the different trends that companies are looking at is what's called shadow AI and basically corporate AI policies. And what shadow AI means, people say, well, what's shadow AI? Okay, shadow AI arises when impatient employees seeking quick solutions or simply wanting to explore new tech faster than a cautious company policy allows, they implement generative AI in the workplace without going through IT approval or oversight. So they don't put in a ticket. They just, they go, they bypass the legal, they bypass their managers and they start implementing AI without approval. It's called shadow AI. Very, very like murky, dicey type of behavior look into it because companies that are into shadow AI, okay, who, who don't follow this can get into massive problems. There's a lot of consulting companies who advise on shadow AI because this is a dangerous, dangerous path. A lot of companies, employees are taking without the approval of their management or higher ups. Now, let me lay down some graphics for you, for you to understand the estimate of AI's growth. Now, I am not one to come in and be some type of know-it-all because I'm not. I'm not a techie. Kaufman's a techie. If there's anybody at Theo who is the most schooled in technology, it's Don. Don's whole life is, is you know surrounds technology. He knows, like I'm a I'm a intellectual midget compared to him. But I can tell you this, just based upon my research, this is some of, and I'm going to give you a variety of different think tanks who have estimated growth of AI. So this is global artificial intelligence. And again, I'm going to be targeted here. This is software market revenue. I didn't say healthcare. I didn't say engineering. Okay. I didn't say financial services. No, this is just software. The software market is estimated to be next year about 125 billion. So if you believe that there is what they call a parabolic or a compounded annual accelerated growth, which is what this is because it hasn't peaked, start to look into companies that specialize in software, AI software. And that includes things like NVIDIA, Oracle, Microsoft. That's a big part of their cash flow of their business model. Okay. So again, this is the estimated growth rate. Of the, for the next year, it's supposed to jump from about 95 billion to 125 billion. So it's still on the uptick. Again, revenue year. Now, next one I want to toss your way. Next one. Okay. Artificial intelligence in healthcare. So now I'm kind of like shifting, I'm going across the spectrum. And I'm kind of bringing it to you to let you know, like, oh, the market's still rallying. I'm sorry. I had to look at some positions I'm in. One's doing great. One's doing poorly. Okay. The longs are killing it. That UAL is just woo, loving it. So artificial intelligence in the healthcare market size. So from 2021 to 2030, okay, this is where we are now, healthcare. The, these are all forecasts. It's all extrapolated. 
This one comes from Precedence Research. I don't know anything about them, but I cherry picked them. I sent them a little email saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. They know it. Everybody knows it's public domain at this point. Look, they're forecasting that by 2030, the healthcare AI market is going to be close to 200 billion, up from 28 billion. So you have to kind of roll the, you have to roll this to your head. You have to sit here and literally digest this top to bottom. You have to digest it to sit and again, digest as best you can. Okay, digest it. This would be basically a five-fold increase in growth from now until then. Now, if you believe this, you need to start investigating companies that specialize in AI or are integrating AI into their models. Humana, Cardinal Health, okay, things such as uh, ISRG, in Intuitive Surgical, okay, iRobot, there's, they're out there. They're, they're out there, people. They're out there. I'm not challenging this. I'm just saying, if in fact this is true, there is going to be great opportunity for you to go and investigate healthcare, healthcare services, surgeries, prosthetics. It could be Zimmer. They're, they're out there. Johnson & Johnson. Find out what companies are, are adding to it, and maybe you can figure out what companies are supplying to the J&Js to the Humanas that specialize in AI in the healthcare market. This to me, like is jaw dropping. It's simply stunning. I'm not challenging. I'm saying if this is in fact true, there's a lot of opportunity to be made in artificial intelligence in the healthcare, okay? Next on my list, okay? Global AI logistics. What would include logistics? Okay, FedEx. DHL, UPS, okay, it, it runs the gamut. They're all out there. Just roll it through your head just for a while. Just roll this through your head, okay? Logistics means, you know, CH Robinson, CHRW, CH Robinson Worldwide, moving product, okay? Railroads, airlines, long haul truckers, night transportation, Celadon, swift transportation, short haul truckers, Go through it. United Airlines delivers more packages than they deliver people. Go through it in your head. This is the generative AI logistics market. This is where we are now by millions, not billions as in healthcare, but by millions. So for me, when I look at something like this, what goes through my mind is, wow, there's a lot of much more opportunity here than meets the eye. Because here it's going from 800 million to what? 13, did I bear, did or dare I say billion? I mean, it's just hard for me like to digest this, but this is a monster growth rate. So if you were sitting around, where would you want to place your money for long-term investing? Would you like to place it in AI, you know, uh, software? Because there's opportunity there. But if you want that like kicking growth, that momentum growth, that hockey stick, this is where it is. If in fact those numbers have a degree of accuracy and efficacy to them. So I'm just throwing it out there. The forecasted market is 13 billion. And to me, it seems like, huh, it seems like low. This is software solutions, software. And this is what's known as just solutions orientation all throughout. And the CAGR, CAGR is the, an acronym for compounded annual growth rate, which is growth on growth. It's not single growth, it's compounded. It's 43.5%, which is like, ah, it's like jaw, the angels sing. It's like jaw dropping. You can see it right there. Take a look. Take a look into these companies and figure out, well, is FedEx hiring an outside vendor or are they doing it in-house? See where the opportunities might buy in the generative AI logistics market, as in delivery from point A to B, services, packages, things you drop on your foot that hurt. Next. OK, and this is like the overall like mama, the granddaddy of them all. This isn't necessarily what I consider to be, you know, you know, sector specific, industry specific. It's just the global AI market, period, by Grandview Research. Now, Grandview 
tends to be very, very well respected. They've been around a long time. I'm not plugging them. I'm not walking in here and telling you, plug, plug. I'm not doing that at all. I'm just telling you, they've been around a long time in technology is what they specialize. They're kind of like the a second level Gartner group. Gartner group, by the way, is publicly traded. I, this is not publicly traded. So just be aware of that. Services, software, hardware, three different dimensions. Look how it's broke down. Here is where okay, it ended last year at 196 billion overall. Make the quantum leap forward. That's what I'm asking you to do. Quantum leap this forward. Look at 2030. If you add up services, software, and hardware, you just pyramid it in this bar chart. Okay, now you're looking at something on the order of about what? 10 times the size of what you're looking at now. So they're talking about a CAGR of 36.6% overall. So if you went to logistics, it's 46%, which technically means other parts of AI, other specialty areas, modalities, they may have 25% CAGR or 20% CAGR. This one's like a as a weighted average of all of them. This is impressive as hell. I'm sorry, this is impressive as, as get out. So I'm looking at this going, wow, overall compound growth rate of you know 36.6%. I mean, this looks to be at least 10, 20 times the size of where it is now. So if you believe that AI is the future and if you bite into this, okay, then go out, do your due diligence, either buy a plain vanilla uh, AI stock or find a specialty one such as logistics or healthcare or just software or storage or cloud or chat GPT. Find your groove. Find that sector that you think is cheap and it's got opportunity. Find you the sector that you think is saturated. It's overpriced. It's peaked. And it's already on its way down. Because that's what happened to NVIDIA. NVIDIA looks like it kind of shot its wad. It's already overexposed. But there may be others that are underrepresented, underexposed, that you might have an opportunity to dial into and make some money. But again, this is what I came here for. I'm not a salesman. Don't even associate with me. I'm just providing opportunity. I'm providing data for you to absorb, to integrate, to synthesize, okay, and figure out, like, do I want to be a part of this AI revolution? And if I do, what side do I want to trade on? The long or the short? What's my time horizon? Do I want to invest? Do I want to trade? Figure it out. I'm just here to present you with ideas. That's what Brandon does every Wednesday. He comes on, he presents ideas. Every now and then I come on, I do, you know, the email bonanza. I do the uh, ask the analyst lightning round to give you ideas. But those are ideas that you feed me and then I answer them. These are strictly coming from me and like a push notification to you. Maybe you should be looking into this. Again, I, I, I like to keep everybody in the know all the time. If you run out of ideas and you get tired, you're not going to sit here and be on Theo. I want you on Theo all the time. I want to be a source, like a reservoir of ideas, not necessarily endorsing them, but just constantly feeding you. It's like food for thought. So you realize where there's opportunity short and long. I think there's great opportunity in AI. I just don't think you should get in over your skis and think AI is going to answer all of your questions. It's going to figure out and solve the world's problems. It's not. It's got ethical problems. It's got legal problems. It's got copyright problems. It's going to create like, lots of unemployment in the future. It, it's, it, there, it's got as much bad as there is good. That's what I'm telling you. But knowing how Wall Street operates, it's money first, people's feelings last. Carl Icahn once said, if you want a friend, okay, buy a dog, get a dog. Wall Street has no friends. It's heartless. I totally agree. I've been around long enough to tell you, most people on Wall Street care about one thing. They don't care about you. They just care about your money. Not And they don't care about you keeping money. They care about making money off you. That's what they care about most. That's why when you come to Theo, I'm here not to protect you, but at least give you an idea of how to protect yourself. Now, let's talk about the AI companies themselves. What are the AI companies? Okay, first things first. The premier AI company is NVIDIA. NVIDIA is the premier. So what is it known for? Here is the description of what it's known for. It's known for its graphics cards, but the company also produces microchips for autonomous driving cars. So they could supply it to, to possibly to Tesla. 
and AI applications. So the company does AI applications, okay? And they produce microchips, okay? That's one big player. IBM, a massive, massive player in the AI generative world, okay? So what is IBM's functionality, okay? It has an extreme portfolio highlighted by the Watson platform, which is a form of AI with strengths in conversational AI, machine learning, and automation. IBM, write this down, Theotra members, generative AI, machine learning, ML, and also automation, conversational, voiceover, text, protocol, AI. That's their specialty. So you ask, I deliver. Because last night I got an email saying, when are you going to tell us the companies? I'm doing it right now. Here are the players. Okay. Next player in here. Okay. Price Waterhouse Coopers. You may probably not see because I don't think they're public. PwC. They might be here. They're not. So Price Waterhouse Coopers is a private, large consulting company, heavily, heavily, heavily into AI. What is Price Waterhouse Coopers? What do they kind of specialize in? They empower people. Um, they basically work with teams to build. AI team. So they're in the human resource side of building out AI, not the mechanical, not the technology. They source people and they match people to projects. That's what they do. Okay. They're a professional network servicing company. Next player in the AI space, Adobe. I know a lot of you are like, I know that. Listen, I know that you know. Okay. That doesn't surprise me. I know that you know, so don't worry about it, okay? Adobe is a big player in AI. Like, what exactly do they do? They do mainly what's called, you know, they do Photoshop, but they build what's called SAAS creative tools for end users. So they build the tools that allow you to program the AI languages, the machine learning, the NLP, natural language, lang natural language processing. They give you the tools. They don't give you the chips. They don't give you the code. They give you the other tools to help build out an AI uh, system is what they do, or what's called an AI web design. And they do obviously software, which includes Photoshop. They are a massive, massive player in the AI business. And again, you could go down here, like where do I learn more about this? Right here under the Adobe description. Together with the subsidiaries, blah, blah, digital media, read through the description and you'll see where AI kind of integrates and evolves inside here. That's why I bring this to you. A next big player, Meta, monster player in AI. Meta is absolutely gigantic. So what exactly does Facebook do? Okay, you know, how are they part of it? Well, Instagram and WhatsApp are part of what? generative communications, right? Going texting, right? Speaking, voiceover protocol. That's a lot of what they do in their uh, AI. So if you go through the AI portfolio, you can read more about it, okay? They're heavily into chat GPT. Chat GPT is a big, big, big part of what they do, okay? The next player, let me take this off. Palo Alto Networks, Pan W. So Palo Alto Networks is what, okay? They're obviously in the uh, networking side of the business. So if you want to learn more about it, okay, come down here, come on, and read exactly how, okay, Palo Alto Networks with their SAS security and API systems, okay, how they fit in. Palo Alto Networks is mainly like a cybersecurity firm, so obviously Palo Alto Networks is going to be involved in cybersecurity fraud protection against AI. So if you're into like, I believe that cybersecurity and malware and fraud is the future, then start, I would start right now, today, researching Palo Alto Networks. Go to their website right here, paloaltonetworks.com. Look where my hand is, right there. Go to the website. Start deep, deep dive, deep, deep dive. Get in there and find out exactly what this company does and what's their role and their market share in AI. They're a big, big player in AI. Here's another monster player, obviously. Amazon World Services speaks for itself. Amazon is a big, big part 
of AI. They're building out the cloud infrastructure. Amazon is trying to basically curate, absorb, swallow, digest, parse, sponge every piece of data in the world, package it, sell it, pipeline it. This is what they do. Like most people think of Amazon as like, oh, I called up Amazon. I saw the truck in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that. That's low margin. This is high margin. Their technology business is their high margin business. So start looking into, okay, Amazon. Advanced micro devices. Advanced micro devices is a big part of the graphic processing unit, the GPU. Advanced micro builds or constructs what? The chips for AI. They're into AI chips. That's what they do. Now, so is NVIDIA, but they don't necessarily serve the same market or the same way. So start like spending quality time looking into advanced micro devices. The stock has been pummeled. It's up five bucks today. They are the next generation AI. What would I do? Click on the www.amd.com. Go right to the company. Go right to their AI section. It's specialized. You can just go on the drop down menu, see what generative AI, what they do, and start researching it. I keep warning you, just because I provided all these symbols, I am not here to buy them or sell them. I don't care what you do with them. All I care is research, research, research like location, 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 stop trading up a damn chart. It's a waste of time. Look at what these companies do to figure out why some of these AI stocks are imploding and why others are still going up. There's a reason. It has to do with pricing. It has to do with market share. It has to do with their models. It has to do with their resources. It has to do with their ranking. And there's a lot that goes into this. Don't just do like, like I go, I'm just going to get in and be a part of it. I think that's a massive, massive mistake. Massive. Research it first. Okay, another big player. Okay, ServiceNow. What's ServiceNow? Again, I keep telling you, all-time high. What does ServiceNow do? Workflow automation platform for digital businesses. This, to me, there's a reason why this one's at an all-time high. And NVIDIA and Advanced Micro are not even close. Obviously, this company has some form of like stranglehold, monopoly, whatnot on the actual automation platforms, which is another subset or division of AI. Remember, there's many layers of AI. It's like an onion. You keep peeling it, many specialties. They are doing the workflow automation. Looks like they have a monopoly here. This could be a buy. It might be a sell. Research it. Again, company itself, 200 million shares. I was looking into them today. 150 times earnings might look cheap if they've got 150% growth rate. They're piling on the money. It's called service now. Okay. Next, ANET. Okay. Arista Networks, another monster player. Got to an all time high of 376. Okay. Now it's doing what? Kind of like settling in. We're settling in. See what's happening? Okay. And it's just trying to gain some traction up a buck here today. Arista Networks, once again, go to the description, come down here, Santa Clara, California. Sales, the development, marketing, and sales of data-driven cloud networking solutions for data centers, campus, and routing environments. Obviously, AI is going to have to have a lot around storage. So they specialize in storage. Not everyone specializes. AMD is not big storage. Uh, NVIDIA is not big in storage. Okay, They are. Arista is a big player big margins, start looking into Arista. These are big players in AI, okay? Who else is into AI apart? I'm just giving you the kind of like the monster players, okay? Obviously, Tesla is one of the 10 largest players in AI. Now, 10, it's up 10 bucks today. I don't know. I don't care why. They're just buying off the dead cap bounce. But obviously, Tesla has got its, like, it's got its hand in driverless cars, which is obviously AI. They're also probably not just that. They're probably doing like um, compass systems, automation systems, operations, you know, basically just talking and doing directions like Waymo. They probably have their, their, their fingers in so many AI cookie jars that you're never going to figure it all out because it's like behind closed doors with Elon Musk. But obviously, Tesla's future is predicated on AI. There's, there's, there, don't even sit and think. Like, are they into it? It's obvious. The driverless cars, that's obvious. But there's more than meets the eye behind Tesla and Elon Musk. Geniuses don't 
just sit there and come up with one idea. They tend to like Jack Dorsey. They come, they tend to come up with many, many applications, many ideas. So that's another player. Another player here is obviously AI called C3 AI Incorporated. Now this one is falling on hard times, which goes to my point. Don't sit there and tell me, please don't BS me and tell me, oh, you know, it's don't worry. It's, they're all the same. They're not all kind of the same cloth. Okay, their financials are different, their models are different, their markets are different, their clients are different, their size is different, their resources are different, the people who run the company, you know, come on. They're in Redwood City, California, which is obviously South San Francisco. They do enterprise AI software. So obviously their entire company, okay, the hub of the company is AI. They do inventory optimization, generative AI, supply network risk schedule optimization, okay, internet of things, financial services, okay, they're everywhere. They are the Walmart, they are, they are, they're a superstore of all AI and all things. Is that good? Yes. Is it bad? Yes. Why is it bad? Because you can't be all things to all people. It doesn't work. So obviously what this company's done is it's trying to, to specialize and do too much when probably it'd be best to do what? Okay downsize and specialize in one area, get their market. Because now they're competing against a lot of other players who have more resources, who probably are in the same spot that they are. And it doesn't help their cause whatsoever. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there for you, okay, when it comes to uh, AI, C3 AI. You see that? Okay. Company, fall, it's just, again, spread too hard. Another big player. Path. It's called UI Path. UI Path. Look at the stock, crushed. What did they do wrong? Okay, again, profit margins, not very juicy, but what exactly do they do? Robotic process automation solutions. They do AI, machine learning, natural language processing capabilities, decision information processing, automation cloud. So again, what they do is, okay, they're in that fine tuning, tweaking type of business is what they do. They come in and they're like, oh, you have a uh, AI business already in operation. We're going to come in. We're going to make it better. We're going to optimize it. Okay. And they have many ways of going about doing this. They obviously specialize in it. They're 100% AI. One of the problems when a company is 100% AI is what? It's concentration risk. It means all of their cash flow comes only from AI. If AI hits a wall, if budgets are cut, this company is going to suffer. Whereas if budgets are cut, on, on IBM or NVIDIA, they have other divisions to fall back on. AI, you know, Microsoft, Meta, many divisions to fall back on. Speaking of which, the other last big player is Microsoft. Microsoft is not all AI, but they are starting to move in that direction. Meta is much more AI, so is NVIDIA. Microsoft's bringing up the rear, but I'm sure eventually Satya Nadella will figure out like when they find their sweet spot that they'll be able to supply, okay, on uh, when it comes to AI. So Microsoft's a big player, Amazon or stuff. Like I've spilled out just as many as you can possibly imagine, but I also want to throw out there that there, there's a couple others on, on like my list um, that are not so uh, mainstream. One mainstream obviously is Google. So Google uh, is starting to get more and more and more a part of AI is what they're doing. Um, they're they're basically doing what's called generative AI. They have a project called Gemini. So if you type into the search engine, Gemini Google, it'll populate with all the information you need on Google's direction. This is what Google's future is. Google's future is in Gemini. That's their AI tool. So if you think that Google's AI tool is not gonna take them to the next level, then don't buy Google because Google itself, you know, has got other issues afoot, anti-competitive behavior, their market share starting to slip, their advertising dollars are going down. Again, Google has a AI cash flow element to them, but this is not a big focal part of it. It's much bigger for uh, Arista Networks, bigger for Meta, much bigger for, for cloud. It's much bigger. The last big player is Oracle. Oracle is massively into AI massively, Oracle Fusion. Oracle's big thing 
is relational database management where they compete with CRM, salesforce.com. But their other big business is cloud. Oracle literally is going head to head with their cloud application, database, Java, everything to Oracle is collecting data. Who sounds like that? Yeah, that's what Amazon does. That's what Meta does. So Oracle, Meta, Amazon, they're the three biggest players who are saying, they're like vacuum cleaners. We want to suck up all the data in the world, parse it, clean it, move it around, repackage it, resell it. That's what they do. Analytics, what have demographics. That's a big part of what Oracle does. It's a big part of what Meta does. Okay. They're basically just gather their information gatherers and then they sell the information. These are the companies you kind of have to like be on the, 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 what I call the front line with. One other company, uh, and again, there's a few other ones. One's called Databricks. Let's see if Databricks comes in here. There is no, no, Databricks is private. That's another big player. Then you also have also player is what's called Data Robot. Okay, Data Robot's not public. They're a big player, a private company. Then you've got Figure AI. So you see where it says there's no figure AI. So they're out of the picture. Then you've got what's called hugging face. Is there a hugging face? They're also private. And then you've got what's called grammar, grammarly. Okay, grammarly is not, it's private company. I'm just throwing names out of the list because these are what they call the top AI companies out there. Grammarly, okay, I told you. Anthropic, you've got one called Cohere. Is Cohere here? There is no cohere. It's coherent, but that's not AI. So you have cohere. They're a big player in AI. Meta, AI itself, figure AI. Okay, two more. Skillsoft. Okay, Skillsoft is into AI. They're a big player. They're publicly traded. So Skillsoft is a part of AI. Okay, go look up Skillsoft, small company. Well, what do we got here? 8 million shares. Probably want to avoid it. Too thin. But they do specialize in one thing and one thing only which is AI, just kind of throwing it out there. The last piece of the puzzle, the last five minutes, where do you find, okay? Where is the information reservoir of these AI companies? Where do they exist? I will lay them out for you one by one by one, okay? Here is your AI resources, places to go to learn AI, everything you want to know about AI. Number one, MIT Technology Review. Go to MIT Technology Review. Number two, Berkeley, as in my undergraduate program, Berkeley Artificial Intelligence, okay, blog, also called the BAIR. Okay, these are AI resources for you. Then you have what's known as a Google AI blog. You can go to a Google AI blog. Number four is what's called the RASA.io AI. Okay, and that's AI, pardon me generated, it's a newsletter. So the newsletter is called rasa.io, it's a newsletter. They specialize only in one thing, information trends on AI. Then you can go look up what's called Machine Learning Mastery. It's another website that supplies information on AI. You can go to www.openai to gain information, you can procure as much as you want to your heart's content. It's a pro it's a nonprofit AI research and development or deployment company. Okay, here's another one for you. Here's I'll I'll lay out the list when I'm done. I'm almost done. There's Futurisms AI blog. So if you go to www, just type in your search engine Futurism. Go there. There's an AI blog. Then you have what's called the AWS, the Amazon World Services Machine Learning Blog. So yes, Amazon itself is a resource to learn about AI. All you want to know about AI and trends and growth, 
That's another big player out there. Obviously, you can see I've spent a lot of time okay, doing research on this. Then you can go to the Guardian AI news feed. They will also supply you with as much information as you want on different views and feeds about and the culture of AI. Number 10, just about done. Learn prompting. If you go to learn prompting, it's an open source curriculum so you can learn about AI. Then you can go basically to do your own research generically. There's a lot of online courses or course and courses to learn about AI. So all you do is type in AI online courses and there's hundreds out there that will bring you to up to speed. And the last is you can consult universities and enroll in academic programs that are accredited where you could spend maybe a year or less just learning AI top to bottom. So again, these are the top 12 AI resources according to the research that I did personally and got some feedback from some other people who said, yeah, there's better and this and that. But everybody was like a, a concerted agreement that this was a good place to start. So there's the MIT Review, Berkeley, Google, the RASA newsletter, Machine Learning Mastery is its own site, OpenAI, Futurism's AI blog. All of these will supplement your learning of how to get a, a exposed to AI without necessarily being intimidated, without being on the outside looking and going, I'm just trading the chart. Damn it, lost $12,000. Yeah, that's what a trading a chart will do. You need to learn about the company. You need to know that they have the resources, the intelligence, the market, the people. They've got the tools in place, the model. You should never trade these stocks unless you absolutely understand to a degree their business. You don't need to know everything. Just know enough to be dangerous. On that note, I have come to the end of my four day, dare I say four days, I've never in my lifetime ever spent four days okay, working on a subject matter, but I did on this one around, you know, once, and I figure I was, I'm gonna do this once every decade. It's just that AI is such a hot buzz term. It's so, you know, it's everywhere. I figured, okay, that's it. I'm tackling this. I'm gonna bring it to its knees, bring it to Theo, see if I can get people to stop trading off a damn chart and actually know something about what they trade. That was my goal. So this is my final installment, part four. I can check it off, I'm done, of Attack of the Clones, profiling the rise of artificial intelligence or AI. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. I hope I haven't bored you. I hope it hasn't been overwhelming. But sometimes if you're gonna compact, you know, five years into four days, it takes a little bit of a fire hose. So I try to like temper it and control it, but. I, at least I structured it and I thought it sort of in a nice, intelligible, nice flowing way. In the meantime, Blake Young is going to come up next. Again, I caution you, all of you, be careful in the market today. To me, it looks like that they're what they're doing is they're doing the same old, same old. You're like, what does that mean? They're just buying weakness, buying strength and selling weakness. They're just going right back to financials. Oh, I'm going to buy Goldman. They just went back to strength. That's all they did. They bought financials. They didn't even listen. I'm going to buy from them and right back to strength. That's what they did. And I'm going to sell weakness for me. Okay. It's one of my positions. I'm hanging tough. I'm not going to sell it. I don't care how much they bully it. I don't care. Um, I've also got a position in, uh, what else do I have a position in? Um, yeah, this one backed off a little bit. I actually want to add to it today. They're, they're just grinding it away. I'm going to see how it plays out. I'm going to try to collect this, but I like the way this one's looking. It's not having a good day, but it doesn't doesn't scare me away. But again, there are certain things I'm long because they're cheap. There's certain things I would avoid. Just make sure you don't chase them. In the meantime, Blake, I'm going to turn this over to you. I just okay. see the market is running in place today. It's not going to collapse because the advanced decline is too strong. But then again, mm -hmm. it's not going to run up because it's being bruised by um, NVIDIA's overhang with the antitrust. Let's say you. Oh, very interesting. I wasn't really looking at the NVIDIA antitrust. Very interesting. Thanks. Appreciate it. I think it ties in really well with what we're going to talk about. Um, but give me one second. We're going to change over and then we will get to it.